Happy New Year and welcome to Sheboygan County Government working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have Roger Lanning, the Highway Commissioner, as our guest. Roger, welcome. Thank you. As you know, it's that time of the year where it gets cold and slick and we have a number of folks from our Highway Department out there keeping those roads safe. and. Roger's here today to talk a little bit about the valuable work that the Highway Department does, his roles and responsibilities, and what we can do to keep people safe out there on the road. So good. It's good to have you with us, Roger. Appreciate it. Please start by sharing a little bit about yourself and when you first became the Highway Commissioner. Okay. Um, I started working for Fort Worth Sheboygan County in 1979, and uh, I'll be starting uh, my 20th year as, as Highway Commissioner uh, in January. I, the Office of Highway Commissioner is uh, elected by the county board every four years, and uh, my next term is up at the end of 2006. Well, it's been a pleasure knowing you and working <laughs> with you. Uh, 20 years, you said? I'll be starting 20 years Out as commissioner. Outstanding. And you say, as commissioner, how long have you worked for in this line of work? Well, I've been with Sheboygan County, as I mentioned, uh, uh, for 26 years, and then uh, I, w I was with Fond du Lac County for nine years prior. So. Uh, uh, 35 years. And when you think about the highway department operations, how would you sum up your primary uh, role and responsibilities? Well, role and responsibilities, I guess, would be best summed by saying that the, the role of the highway department is to design, maintain, construct the county trunk highway system of roadways within the county. And. Uh, that's the primary focus of all the county highway departments in the state is to focus on the county highways. And, and the county highways are, are those with letters. And when you say county highways, you know, folks may be thinking, well, what does that mean? How many roads, how many highways? What are you working with out there? Well, in, in Sheboygan County, uh, there are 1,545 miles of roadway. And of that amount, 452 are county tr trunk highways, which the county highway department is directly responsible. 452 miles of county trunk highways that you're directly responsible for plowing, maintaining, improving. That's correct. How does that compare to other counties across the state? Well, I guess that very simply, we're, I believe Chiboyan County is, is uh, 35th in size in square miles, mm -hmm. and we have the fifth most county trunks uh, of the 72 counties in the state. And immediately the a viewer may be wondering, well, how is that if we're 35th in size, we have the fifth most roads, why is that? Well, the, as people can tell, uh, when you drive around Sheboygan County, you basically have a road around every square mile. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when the townships were laid out into the 36 sections of, of land, and, and be, because we, we were an agricultural county, and if you drive around, uh, uh, there were a lot of cheese factories mm -hmm. uh, scattered around the county, and 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 the dairy farmers, uh, you know, you you couldn't be a, a long distance away from the uh, from the cheese factory in in, in, in order to haul your milk uh, years ago, and and everyone wanted a good road in 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 order to 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 get their milk and their produce to market. And I know that when pe sometimes people visit the state of Wisconsin, or specifically our community, they I hear two things. One, they're impressed with our roads and the, and the blacktop and the, the shape they're in, but two, the number that we have mm -hmm. here and how in Michigan and Minnesota and other parts of the country have a lot of gravel road, town roads, and that's, right. that's not the case here. And it, it primarily goes back historically to the, to the dairy industry. Right. Now, to maintain all these roads and keep them plowed in the winter, uh, obviously that takes quite a workforce and, and, a, and some different divisions, mm -hmm. units of... Uh, focus in your department. Why don't you give us a feel for how that works? Well, out, we have 117 employees scattered around the county into six uh, what we call district garages. Uh, people will know them as in Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, Adel, on the interstate south of uh, Sheboygan, Howard's Grove, uh, and those satellite district garages handle the road maintenance out of those garages. Each garage is responsible for of the, all the roads we maintain for about 200 miles or 180, 100, 180 and 200 miles of, of roadway out of each uh, district garage. And then, of course, the administration 
offices and the uh, vehicle repair facility is here in Sheboygan on 23rd Street. So how many highway sheds are there then? Six. There's six and each highway shed then has responsibility for a specific area in the county. That's correct. Please touch on their, you know, what are they doing throughout the year? Obviously the winter months they're out there plowing, but what's a snapshot of their responsibilities? Well, um, uh, the, keep in mind that we, we may, in addition to the county trunks, we also by contractor arrangement maintain the state and interstate roadways for the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the state of Wisconsin is unique in that regard in that they contract with the counties to maintain uh, their roadways. Uh, it's the only state in the union that, that does that and they've, the state of Wisconsin is extremely pleased with, with that arrangement and that is and that's been historical since, since 1912 that the counties have maintained the state and interstate roads for the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin does not have any of its any, any road maintenance equipment. It's all contracted with the counties. And then in addition to that, we work very closely with other local units of government, the townships and the villages and the cities in, the, in providing various maintenance services uh, for them. Now, from, from snow plowing to, to crack filling to, to litter pickup, all of what I would call the routine maintenance, uh, patching, whatnot, and then of course the, the, the winter maintenance, snow plowing side of the house. And I may have asked this, I think as a number of our viewers are aware of, the county has 23 departments. The highway department is one of our largest. What is your budget and how many employees do you have? 117 employees. And our, our budget uh, for 2006 will be 14.7 million. And of that, of the county levy, uh, the, co the highway department's share of that is 4.2 million. Very good, thank you, Roger. Okay. Roger, as you know, I'm also a town chairman, and I'm very happy as a town chairman to know that in Sheboygan County, the county can be contracted to do highway work in municipalities. Can you talk just a little bit about how you coordinate all that work, especially when summer comes on, and additionally, what types of work you do? Sure. Um, keep in mind that one of my primary roles is, is to market the highway department's services to the local units of government. Uh, we mentioned the, the winter maintenance part of it, but during the, during the what I call construction season or the, the non-snow plowing season, uh, we, ha we have uh, construction crews out there where, uh, of course, in, we, we start with our surveying and engineering department, uh, surveying and design the various roadways. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a grading crew which we can reconstruct and regrade the roadways. We crush our own aggregate for, for the new roadways and we produce uh, the asphalt also for, the, for any new roadways or the overlay of uh, existing roadways. So it, I like to call it, we're, we're sort of a full service department uh, for road construction and, and road maintenance for, for the municipalities in the county. And it's my role during the summer of construction season to to work with the townships and the villages to, to market our services and, and um, um, solicit jobs, estimate jobs in, in order to, to procure work for the department during the summer construction. There's really a benefit both for the county and for municipalities to have that arrangement, isn't there? I think so, only because you, you don't have a duplication of manpower and, and, and equipment. Uh, if, you know, I, it's very simple, I guess, is that the, the more work you can do uh, uh, unit-wise, like for example, if you're crushing gravel or making blacktop, the more you can produce and, and, and call it sell or, or, or market, the, the cheaper the, the unit cost is, is going to be for, for, for example, a, a ton of blacktop. The more you can produce, the cheaper the unit cost is going to be. So yes, yeah, so that's why it's so important for, for me to, to market the services to the local units. And, and in turn, yes, that, that lowers the cost to, to all of the taxpayers, the county taxpayers, for, because it lowers the cost for work on our county roads, as well as providing that lower cost of service to the townships and municipalities that we work with. Okay. And then talking about the town of Sherman, I'm glad that the town of Sherman doesn't have to buy a snow plow or two and have that investment and have that plow sitting there nine months of the year doing nothing. Talking about snow, what part of your budget is involved in snow plowing? 
Well, out of the budget, on, on an average uh, winter, whatever you want to consider average is, <laughs> uh, snow plowing and salting um, amounts to about a, about a million dollars a year mm -hmm. on, on the county roads itself. So um, as we all know, if it would snow and you could push it off, we would get done quickly and easily. But as temperatures drops and drop and wind picks up and changes direction before and during and after a storm, sometimes, as you've seen this year already, we may get an inch or two of snow and, and because of the wind and temperatures, you're, you're chasing that inch or two of snow for maybe two or three days. How many plows do we have available should we have, say, a one to two inch snowstorm? And how would the operation start? How would you handle two inches of snow? We, uh, as far as the starting part of it, we, we work very closely with, with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, they, of course, have their, their eyes out on the road, uh, all three shifts. We have uh, folks on call also uh, who are monitoring the, the weather uh, situation. And so we work very closely. And uh, we've seen through the years, and, and all, all of our residents know that, if they drive from one side of the county to another, how, the, uh, how a storm and the conditions can change from one end of the county or one side of the county to another, you know, with Lake Michigan here and, and the further west you go sometimes, uh, with up, up around in the town of Greenbush, the, the conditions and temperatures vary tremendously. So I like to use the term zone. There's different zones in the county that depending on the storm, it, it's gonna react differently. So we, we may have plows if it's in the, in the uh, Spring or fall, we may have plows out down on this end of the county and the sun is shining in Greenbush or vice versa. So bottom line is we work very closely with, with, with the uh, Sheriff's Department and our own people being on call. But, it, but they monitor it and then, and, and then make, make the decision as to which of the district garages we have to send men out of and how many. And you know, if it's, a, if it's just a light dusting where it's gonna just be spot salting, you, know, you certainly only need a couple guys. But in, uh, in, in the regular one to two inch snow, we, we have 40 uh, trucks. And if we, uh, if we need the, to push it back or whatever, we have 12 graders that, that, that we can put on also. So, so 40 trucks. And uh, the one to two inch snowfall, um, if, if we can get it all taken care of in an eight hour day, uh, about 17 to $20,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a kid, and I'm dating myself, I used to enjoy seeing the big old Oshkoshes go down and widen the roads. Do we still have those or have they been retired? The newest one is 1979. <laughs> but yes, we, we still have, we have three of them in each of our district garages. Mm, okay. uh, I guess I look at those as, as like a fire truck and that uh, yes, you don't use it very much, but <laughs> one of these years, uh, it isn't really costing any, you know, they're all depreciated mm -hmm. out and it's just a matter of, of, of maybe tires and batteries uh, you know, keeping them, sure. getting, keeping them ready to go in case we need them. Mm -hmm. But we, we have downsized uh, somewhat from what we used to have. Okay. What hours do your employees work? Uh, 7 to 3.30 is the, is the traditional shift. And during the winter months, like, like we're in now, we, uh, about five plus years ago, we, do, we, we, we started a new, uh, call it shift if you may, we're, we have two uh, individuals who work like a second shift, what you, you would say from four to 11, and then a third shift from 11 to seven. And they uh, help to handle the emergency situations during the winter time. If there's a, a area of spot drifting or, or, or you know, if it's slippery or anything like that, that if the Sheriff's Department would call, that they're, they're able to respond very quickly to that emergency which of course helps in, 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 in the time of the response and, and especially that, that it takes any guesswork out of it because they're, they're able to get right there and take care of it rather than having to call a, well, one of our guys who are on call to go and look first and see how many people to, it's, is gonna be needed to uh, react to the situation. So that having the two guys on second, two guys on third, has helped tremendously with, with the safety and the emergency response uh, during, for winter conditions. Okay. And there have been times when you have plowed 24 hours a day or had people out 24 hours a day 
for a number of days, right, in a big storm. We've been so. fortunate in the last number of years. We haven't had to do that, but uh, there are occasions, of course, you you really don't want to keep the guys out there any right. more than 12 hours at a shift. And and uh, so you try and rotate some of the guys in, in and out and try and get them off the road a little bit, maybe during the uh, during the midnight hours, if, if you may. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the primarily, uh, if it's a storm, we'd, we'd, the full force will go out like, like at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Do you have any winter driving tips or how one can best encounter a snowplow or other? I, I guess the best winter driving tics, uh, tips are, you know, drive to fit the conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the road is not going to be bare all over. So you have to monitor your speed so you, so you can handle any of the situations where it's drifting or... or or it becomes slippery and like that. And I guess most importantly is, you know, if, if, if you're behind a snowplow, stay back, especially from the, at an intersection, because, you know, we, we don't just plow through and keep going. In many cases, we have to back up to take a second pass to, to clean up the whole intersection. And when a car is right up tight behind the truck, you, you cannot see them in, your, in the mirrors because you just don't know there's, there's a car behind there. So that, that'd be my, my my sincere uh, uh, request to the driving public to don't pull up right tight to the snowplow. Don't, yeah. don't follow too closely. And then finally, how can our viewers get the best information about what the highway conditions might be? Well, there's, uh, if you would go to the <coughs> DOT uh, website, and that simply is, I'll, I'll give it to the viewers, it's www.dot.state.wi.us. DOT.state.wi.us, and you can get the statewide uh, statewide weather conditions off, off of their website. In addition, you can call the, uh, an 800 number for road conditions. It's 1-800-762-3947. And if people would like to go to our, our county website, uh, we also have a link to the Department of Transportation that, that will link them uh, into there where they can also get the weather off of the web. Okay, thank you, Roger. Roger, I was at a, a meeting today, a rotary meeting today where, from P Plymouth where a gentleman raised an issue or a concern that he had about uh, highway snow plowing and he asked me to pass it on to you, so I'm going to do it right here on <laughs> TV8 so he and others can see that the question was asked and perhaps others ha have had the same question. Uh, when the plows go through, often the front of the driveway will get filled. and. He said that uh, there are times or instances where he thought, couldn't the snow plow, you know, move the wing or, or be able to clear that out a little bit better so they don't leave such a pile there? And especially in instances, and he gave an example where you have a, an elderly family or someone like that. What's the county's policy? How is that handled? When, well, of course, when the, when the wing is down on a truck, it's, it's it's rigid, it doesn't flex one, one way or the other. So as you're coming along and plowing the shoulder, that, 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 uh, that what I would call windrow of snow uh, is, is going to come along with it. And un unless we would pull into the driveway, there's no way that you can get the wing, uh, the snow off of the wing and, 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 not, and not fill uh, or bring snow into the driveway. And I, you're right, it seems that every time you would get your driveway shoveled, here comes the snowplow and <laughs> filling it up again. But it's very difficult to do. I know that our guys, when, for example, when things would get caught up a little bit and you know, they know on their routes where, where there are, are you know, people who, who may have difficulty with that. Mm -hmm. And we will, as we have time, come back and, and sometimes you know, to push it back. A little bit just to help out. Just it's common for and safety. and he said he heard that some of your uh, staff have done that in the past, and he was very complimentary as a whole. But was curious, and I ex expected that to be the response. At first and foremost, we got to get those roadways cleared so right, people can get to and from work and school and everywhere else. But as you get caught up, then that is permitted. That if they can, they can go along to some areas and actually help yeah. clear that out a little bit. We 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 won't go drive up the driveway right. or anything like that but if it, you know how it how it piles up right at the very end sure that to push that back and in, to be quite frank if we gets pushed back it it helps us too because it isn't if it's pushed back it isn't drifting out onto the roadway but the key is most people are going to have to continue to take responsibility to clear that out when the plow comes through and that includes me <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, moving on, we've talked a little bit about your roles and responsibilities and, and the um, organization of the highway department and obviously this time of the year, the focus on snow re removal and safety. But let's talk a little bit about some of the very important projects. I know you have a mm -hmm. uh, very thorough plan and pr planning process that you look at every year and you take out, I think, as far as 20 years. Yes. Set mm -hmm. the stage for us, please. What does that planning process entail and what are some of the upcoming projects for 06? Well, very simply with our long range, uh, what I call construction plan, our, what I would call major roadways, the ones that have the most traffic or, or, or function uh, to the highest degree, getting from, from village to village, for example, or city to city. Those are the roads we focus on as far as reconstruction dollars are, are, are concerned. That's, that's the first priority as far as reconstruction. And then with our, the rest of our budget, with the resurfacing and seal coating, shouldering and whatnot, we you know, pick up the rest of those and culverts and whatnot. But uh, you know, some of the projects we, we did this year, uh, we, we reconstructed County Trunk Highway uh, P, a portion of P, out near Glen Beulah from County Trunk Highway C north to A. That, that, that was reconstructed. Uh, we also, uh, in, con in conjunction with the village of Elkhart Lake, reconstructed uh, about six-tenths of a mile of Rhine Street or County A in, uh, from, from the intersection Elkhart Lake easterly going out of town. That, that was reconstructed uh, with them. Um, we worked uh, oh, also a portion of uh, Millersville Avenue or JJ in, in, in Millersville or Howard's Grove, part of that was reconstructed. Uh, we also worked at the airport on, on the main runway extension on, on the south end. That, uh, that we did all of the grading in preparation for the concrete surfacing of it uh, this coming year. That's a major project out at the airport. Uh, we also completed a mile and three quarters of the interurban uh, recreational trail from the county line down in Ozaki County, on County Highway K. Uh, going northeasterly uh, on the old interurban railroad bed, uh, which which runs into Cedar Grove, uh, so that was that was graded and blacktopped, and uh, we finished that in the first part of November this year. So that's uh, some of the the main jobs we that were did done this in year. 05. Yes. And then 06, what do you see coming ahead? Or actually, by the time folks see this, it is 06. Mm -hmm. What projects are you going to be working on this year? Well, uh, one of the reconstruction jobs is going to be two and a half miles of County Highway V, Victor, from State Highway 32 westerly to County Highway I. That will continue us, uh, the V corridor from I-43 to uh, 57 in Waldo. We're, we're programming that corridor. This is the second phase of that reconstruction. We've reconstructed from I-43 to, to V, I mean to 32, and now we're going from 32 to I. That's one job coming up. Eastern Avenue in, in Plymouth, uh, near, uh, uh, from Van Horn, the car dealership mm -hmm. there, going, going westerly up uh, the part that isn't curb and gutter, uh, that'll be, where it's ditch, that'll be urbanized and reconstructed next year. Uh, once again, we'll be working on another portion of the interurban trail from Cedar Grove to Oostburg. Um, County Trunk Highway I, or the Main Street in Adel. Um, we're working with the village on that to, to reconstruct uh, about two thirds of the length of County Highway I as it runs through the village of Adel. I know the State Highway Department has a big job next year on Highway 28, uh, starting in, in, in Waldo and going westerly and southwesterly uh, to uh, Washington County. So that's a long stretch of roadway through, uh, through Waldo and Cascade and Batavia. But that'll be a, uh, that road is in serious need of some work, and the state will be working on that next year. Now, if a constituent has a concern about their road, if, they, if a chunk of uh, blacktop has been kicked up because of the, the snow plowing season, or if they just have an area where they, they think it's a hazard, I, I anticipate in some instances that may be a roadway you had planned to improve, but it might be a year, five years, 10 years down mm -hmm. the road. How do you handle that with more, some of those more immediate safety issues? If it's an immediate safety issue, you know, we, we know our major construction program and we know our, our, our program is laid out for when a road is gonna get resurfaced and whatnot. But in, in, there's always gonna be some immediate needs or some things that, that pop up and we, we simply have to address those out of our normal routine budget. Uh, in most cases, they're, they're, they're not serious. 
uh, that you can take care of it and, and it'll hold until uh, it's, it's, it's next scheduled. Part of uh, next scheduled planning. Right. And if someone has identified a hazard or an area they're concerned with, do they contact you as the highway commissioner? Do they contact their shed, area Both. shed? What, what, what's Both. your preference? I'd, my first preference would be to, to call the district garages, okay. the district sheds, okay. and, and because people know, people know what area they're in and where they're being served out of. That would be the first. But then please feel free to, to call the main office uh, at, at uh, 459-3822 here in Sheboygan. And you can also go on the county website and, 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 and go over to, to, the, to the highway department um, site and, and my email and, and the other my road superintendent's emails and shop superintendent are there. So if there are items uh, or concerns, there are many different ways to contact the department. Outstanding. Well, we certainly appreciate you being our guest today. A lot of information in a short period of time, and I think some good advice. Every year, it can get slick out there, and Roger's staff do a great job trying to keep those roads safe, but uh, certainly your driving habits and calling in when there's an area that needs focus is helpful. And again, thank you for joining us today, Roger. You're welcome. Thank you. In fact, uh, as some of you may be aware, have read in the press recently, what have you, I with Commissioner Roger Lanning and I, and. Uh, uh, Planning Director Shannon Hayden were recently out in D.C. because one of the upcoming projects and initiatives that Roger is going to play a big part of is this non-motorized transportation improvement where pedestrian trails, bike paths, uh, opportunities like that. We're getting some federal funding and, and we'll probably have you on in the near future, you and Shannon, to talk about that, Roger. So again, okay. thank you. Next month, our guest will be Dale Pauls. Dale Pauls, as I'm sure you're aware, is the director of our health care centers, and that is one of our 23 departments, a very important one, and a department that continues from a financial standpoint to uh, uh, give the county board supervisors gray hairs because we continue to, to lose state and federal funds, and that puts a lot more pressure on the property tax levy. So next month, we'll have Dale here. Until then, thanks for joining us, and again, happy holidays.